A little over a year ago, I made a video called A Day in the Life of a Medical Coder. That video went on to receive over 40,000 views to date, and it's one of my most popular videos. But a lot has changed since I made that video. When I made that video, I was working full time as a medical coding auditor and working part time doing medical coding education and YouTube, but that has since changed and it's changed a lot. In January of 2021, I actually left my full time auditing job to become an entrepreneur. So my full time job now is pretty much the YouTube channel plus selling education in regards to medical coding. Now I've structured my business in such a way that a lot of what I do doesn't require a huge amount of continual attention and it kind of opens me up to taking on some additional opportunities in projects in medical coding so that I can keep my skills up to date. So I thought it might be nice to show a kind of day in the life of a medical coder while I'm doing freelance work and then also kind of juggling a little bit of my business as well and how my day flows. Now a lot more day in the life of a medical coder videos have sprung up on YouTube. So it's great to get a variety of the different aspects of people's day that you might experience as a medical coder. Now I also want to preface this by saying that I am someone with over a decade of experience. So the jobs that I do have probably a little bit more flexibility than most coders will find just starting out. I also want to say that at the start of this video, you can see that I had some technical issues with my gear. So because of that, there is some little static on the audio here and there. I didn't want to scrap the whole video just because of a little bit of static. And because of HIPAA and privacy laws, I can't show you any cases or talk to you about what I am coding, but I can kind of talk to you about the flow of my day and the setup. So you can kind of compare and contrast the W2 day versus the W9 day where I'm working as a contractor versus a full-time employee. This was maybe not a typical day, but it, it, it was a day. It was a day in the life of a freelance medical coder. So here we go, Victoria. Okay, Google, turn on the lamp. Well, I am off to a bang today. Um, both my kid and my boyfriend overslept. I woke up at 9.20 and they're usually supposed to be at camp by nine o'clock. Um, both of them were in bed sleeping. And now I'm pretty sure that I somehow uh, broke the clip for my mic. So yeah, my mount for my mic on the camera is definitely broken. Uh, I just ordered a pack of five replacements on Amazon, which was $12. Now, one of the nice things about kind of having my own business is that that is a business expense. So I did put it on my um, business card and hopefully I will have that new pack of shock mounts on Monday, but I guess that means you guys are gonna be following me around on my cell phone. So my typical day looks a little bit different now because I run my own business doing medical coding education and influencer work and YouTube and all kinds of stuff more surrounding education. The other day I was in my mastermind group and I was talking to my friend Lorraine and she mentioned about how she kind of wants her business to be like, she's, she's international, I want to say she's in New Zealand. And she talked about this woman who has this boutique there where everyone stands outside and waits to get into her boutique to buy all the clothes and jewelry and cool stuff she has. And she wants her business online to be kind of like a boutique business. And I like that concept too. A lot of what I do now kind of runs a little bit, I want to say on autopilot. And that opens me up then to additional opportunities to take on projects. Now, ideally, I would like to take on things like auditing plastic surgery, but if someone has a backlog or just a small project that's not going to take more than, you know, a couple of weeks, I'm happy to chip in and work on those as well. So I kind of get to set what it is and when I want to take on additional coding roles. Now, before I get in too much to talking with you guys about the logistics of everything and what I do, um, one of the first things I do in the morning, make coffee. I've been trying to give myself like a 30 day challenge to exercise. And the person who I've been following, he does these really cute little like walking dance exercises, just posted a new video where it's like Britney Spears inspired. So I think I'm going to try that one this morning. So I'm going to go get my coffee and do some exercise, shower, get dressed, and then we'll talk. <laughs>
All right, so I got in some exercise. I got a shower, dried my hair. I am now doing my makeup, which I like to do in my office because I can just adjust the desk to where I want it to be. Um, as far as being able to see to do my makeup and that's better than kind of hovering over the sink and trying to do it that way in the bathroom. Now when I was working full time as a medical coder I basically rolled out of bed and logged online but now that I have that flexibility that I know that I don't have to be logged in at a certain time or that someone's going to email me at a certain time and be like hey Victoria why aren't you on or whatever um, I work kind of later in the day sometimes. Sometimes I wake up early. Sometimes I do wake up at like 6 or 7 a.m. But today I just happen to sleep in a little bit. Now on most days I don't do a full makeup face. I will do like foundation and I'll fix my eyebrows and put on mascara and that's about it. Today I'll probably do a little bit more only because I'm shooting a video. So right now it's the summer, so my daughter's not in school, she is at camp. And my boyfriend is a house husband, so he's responsible for getting my daughter back and forth to camp, and then he does things like clean the house. He is like amazing with repairs. The house that we bought, we bought right before the pandemic, and I don't wanna sound like it's in disrepair, but there's a lot of updates that it needed, so he works a lot on that. He's a mechanical engineer by trade, so for example, right before the summer, he installed a mini split downstairs. And mini split is like a, a ductless air conditioner. And the house that I have, the downstairs level is brick. So he actually had to get instruments to drill through the brick wall of my house to install the mini split. So he's been doing a lot of project house stuff and that kind of thing while I work. Now, most medical coding jobs, they don't want you watching your kids while you're working. There are always, of course, some exceptions to that. My daughter, Lizzie, though, she's nine years old. She is on the autism spectrum. So it was very difficult when she was going through remote learning to balance my day and her day because she would have a break. She'd be up here. She'd be knocking on the door. She'd be going outside. Now Lizzie is very high functioning. She doesn't understand though a lot of social constructs and she just ha kind of has that clumsiness to her so it wouldn't be uncommon that I would be working and I would get an alert that one of the security cameras went off because Lizzie was just wandering through the backyard or going through the gate or going to pick flowers. She's a very 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 creative kid but it's very difficult to work and manage her at the same time. So she goes to camp and then in September, she'll be going back to attending school in person. Now, typically when I work, I do wear my glasses because when I wear my contacts, my eyes get a little bit more dry and then it makes it just a little bit more strained to read the text in the reports that I'm reading in order to code them. So I do wear my glasses when I'm actually working on something for a period of time with my computer. So what I'm kind of debating right now is I want to go down to the farm today and pick up some vegetables and see what kind of stuff they've got, but I have to work and I also have to get some emails done. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do emails work, take a lunch break, run down to the farm on my lunch break so that I can see if they have any corn or other vegetables right now. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to be able to film there though because it is a Mennonite farm. Speaking of lunches, I always pack Lizzie the best lunches. That's one of my favorite things about her now being back at camp and then going to school in September is she loves when I pack her custom lunches and I love taking photos of them and if I was probably going to set up a second account it might be something related to my lunch packing for my kid. So I'm just gonna get my desk back down to the working position. Now I'm not the best with emails. I have about 20 that I've kind of been putting off the past day or two. Uh, the student emails take priority. Some of them are just through different websites that I'm part of, you know, sending me just advertisements of events and stuff that are coming up. So while I was catching up on my emails, I just noticed I sold a course and they purchased the ebook. So I'm going to quick try and get the ebook out. It's 10 minutes until 12 o'clock and I'd really like to start like right at 12, um, if not a few minutes after. So let's see if I can get done in the next 10 minutes. 
All right, I got the email sent. Now I just got something from my QuickBooks saying that my password expired and I need to update some of my banking connections. So I don't think it's going to be 12 o'clock, maybe 12.30. Now before I log in for the day, let me show you a little bit of my setup. So this is my ultra wide monitor that I've shown on some of my previous tours where I can have a lot of information showing on here. So when I log in, I'm gonna log in on this screen and it's gonna open up all of the cases that I need to code for the day. I'm gonna have everything set up here. And then my laptop functions as my second monitor and that's where I keep my Codify program. So my uh, code lookup tools and stuff are all gonna be over here. So I'll use that screen for lookup and research and then this screen for where my work actually is. And of course, my handy dandy medical coding books are right over here on the other side of the desk. So books, screen, second screen. With the remote coding positions that I've worked in the past, you usually have to do something like a duo login where it logs you into kind of a virtual PC. And that is to protect the personal health information of the patients as well as the information of the company. So basically I have the access information. I'm gonna log in and access all of my work through there and then just sit here and code cases for a while, take a break and then go back to coding cases and that'll be the end of the day. Okay, so I'm at a good stopping point. I'm gonna stop right now and go take a break. I actually I'm going to quick jot down what time it is so I don't lose track of my time. Now, if I'm coding something that I'm familiar with, I'll listen to whatever music is usually my favorite, but I find that I can't concentrate as well when it's something that needs more focus if I'm also listening to lyrics at the same time. So right now I'm actually listening to just instrumental music. I listen to stream beats from Harris Heller. I love Harris Heller. He produces a lot of um, license-free music that you can use on like video streams and stuff. And Harris Heller is amazing. He originally started out as someone on Vine and then he moved on to doing gaming and he does a lot of tips for live streams and stuff. I honestly think he's gonna be the next Gary Vaynerchuk. He's absolutely amazing, but he did a lot of just free instrumental streaming music and now he's doing more that actually does have lyrics though. But I've actually heard some studies that you can increase your productivity by listening to video game music because it's just like so upbeat and usually you're trying to like really rush through things and get to the end and boss and that can actually help increase your productivity. This is kind of along the same lines and so far so good. I'm actually keeping up to a pretty good beat right now. So I live in Eastern Pennsylvania and there's a high Mennonite population here. And there's a nice Mennonite farm like right down the street from me, not too far. So I'm gonna head out there today and get some fresh produce. I still don't know what I'm making for dinner. Figure that out later. So I spent $10.50 at the farm. I got a half dozen ear of corn. I got four green peppers, a bag of green beans, a red onion, and two zucchinis. Now I've got my salad and I'm just gonna check on a couple of things, make sure there's nothing urgent I need to take care of, and then I'm gonna go back to doing my coating. So I am about to make dinner. I'm gonna do stuffed peppers tonight. I don't know if I'm gonna make anything with them or just make stuffed peppers. I'm not sure yet. So I gotta make the rice and then cook the ground beef to make stuffed peppers. 
I am not always the best with making rice because apparently you need to measure it in fingers and I think my finger measurement is just off. I just got done cooking and eating supper and now it is almost eight o'clock. I still have work to do and I still have tomorrow's upload to completely edit and get together. So I think it's gonna be a long night. <laughs> Having some computer issues, we're gonna do a reboot. So while we're waiting, something I can mention is I got my books today from my bookkeeper. I do have a bookkeeper. I do hire an accountant for bookkeeping services for the business. So every month I get a statement of what the business brought in, what my expenses were, what the net profit is, what my expected tax liability is. There are a lot of expenses related to being independent or being a freelance medical coder. So for example, your health insurance. I pay for health insurance through the Affordable Care Act. I also buy myself dental and vision insurance. I have to pay for my own retirement fund. I have to pay for my liability insurance. I have held E&O insurance or liability insurance, er errors and omissions insurance, since basically I started doing speaking engagements because I didn't want to be in a situation where I would potentially, not that this would happen or has happened in any sort of frequency, but let's say, for example, I was giving a presentation somewhere and I said, oh, this is how you bill this certain scenario. Someone else went out to their practice, started billing it that way, experienced a loss of revenue, uh, decided to ho hold me liable for that, filed a lawsuit against me. That insurance protects me against that sort of situation. So if I were to give consulting advice and it would be wrong and someone would file a lawsuit against me, that insurance will protect me against those type of lawsuits, the liability insurance. Liability insurance costs a lot more now than it did when I was just working part time. I also pay for my own books, software, encoders. That's all business expenses. Um, I hear a lot of people say like, oh, my code books, I can write them off as educational expenses. In most tax situations, I don't believe you can unless you have an actual business because that would mean if you're writing off things like books that they would be your career expenses and they would have to be all itemized and that would have to all be more than the standard deduction. So in most cases, if you're like a W-2 employee, you can't write off your career-related expenses. It is 10 o'clock, and that means it is time for the kiddo to go to bed. So I'm going to put Lizzie Lou to bed right now. Lizzie requested a cup of hot tea before bed. <laughs> Here you go, kiddo. Thanks, Mom. You're welcome. And she's ready for bed, and I'm going to go back to working on the doozy of a case that I'm working on. I'm finishing up my last case for the day. It is past midnight and I still need to get tomorrow's video edited. I think the video editing should only take me about 40 minutes. All right, I am done. 12.17. Oh, I just need to clock my time now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so it is now past midnight. I still have to edit my video for tomorrow. So I'm gonna try and do that. It shouldn't take me more than 30 to 40 minutes and then I'm going to export the video and while it's exporting, my skin's been terrible lately so I'm gonna maybe do a mask, take a shower and uh, go to sleep. <laughs> I just finished, it took me slightly under an hour, maybe 50 minutes to do the full edit. <sighs> I am exhausted, I'm ready to wash my face and go to bed. So that was definitely a long and late day in the life of a medical coder. I hope you found this video insightful. If you did, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can get alerts when I post new episodes. I will see you guys in the next episode. Until then, just keep on coding on.